Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's zero in a little bit more on the northern polar cap. Turns out that the northern polar cap is substantially bigger, at least the permanent section of the polar cap, the one that doesn't melt in the summertime, compared to the southern polar cap. However, it's not as thick and it contains about the same amount of water ice, estimated to be about 1.6 million cubic kilometers, which is about 350,000 cubic miles of ice, which is an enormous amount. And when you compare that to the amount of water that is in Lake Superior, if you were to melt all the water in the northern polar cap, you would have about 100 times as much water as you find in Lake Superior. There's a lot of water in that northern polar cap. If all the ice were to melt and you could have liquid water on the surface of Mars, it would cover the planet with about 11 meters, about 36 feet of water. So there's an incredible amount of water ice in the northern polar cap of Mars. Now here I tried to draw what the polar cap looks like. This is a picture of the southern polar cap and the northern polar cap looks a little bit the same. We have these strange lines, these strange grooves through the polar cap, both in the southern and northern hemisphere. But in the northern hemisphere, they're a little bit more pronounced. And one of them cuts almost through 60% of the entire diameter of the northern polar cap. It's called Chasma Boreal. It cuts about 60 to 60%. 60 it's a canyon all the way down to the ground. So in other words, there's no ice in that region. These canyons and these grooves were carved by tremendously powerful winds. They're called the, what we call the catabatic winds. It's kind of an interesting name. They're the same type of winds that we have on the southern polar cap on the Earth. We have these tremendously powerful winds that will blow at 100, 200 kilometers per hour. And those are the winds that, that uh, under which the team, the, uh, well, let's see, we had the, uh, I'm trying to think of the name, Amundsen and Scott, that's right. The Scott expedition that tried to reach the Southern Pole, and they actually did do so with ponies, that was not a good idea because the ponies couldn't survive and they died from the cold, so people had to pull the sleds. And by the time they tried to make it back, they were only 11 miles away from the, from the aid and the supplies and people that could help them, but they got stuck in these enormously powerful winds and they couldn't move for days and eventually all froze to death because they couldn't move and it was just simply too cold. Well, we have the same type of winds that are coming down from the polar cap at very high speeds, the cold wind rushing down to the bottom. We find the very same winds on the polar caps of Mars, and then due to the Coriolis force, they tend to get that circulational motion, and that circulational motion is what causes those grooves. Now, the way the grooves are, are caused is by the winds carrying dust and sand covering portions of the polar caps, then the sun heating them, and then allowing that to melt. It's kind of like when you go to where there's snow on the earth, and it just snowed, and then the sun comes out, and there's a big rock there. The snow will melt around the rock because the heat gathered from the sun on the rock. It radiates the heat. Same thing happens with the sand that gets deposited, and so you end up with those grooves that cut through the ice. Now in the wintertime, of course, all that is covered by carbon dioxide ice, and then you have everything glistening white. The size of the pole in the summer is about 1,000 kilometers across, that's the permanent pole, and then in the wintertime it grows to about 3,000 kilometers across, where this is completely covered by carbon dioxide ice, up to one meter thick. And of course that takes a lot of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, and there's fluctuations of about 30% in the amount of atmosphere that we have around Mars due to the amount of carbon dioxide that gets locked in the polar caps in the northern polar cap as well as then of course in the southern winter in the southern polar cap. Uh, the temperature at the pole in the winter time it stays below 150 Kelvin. Remember that in the wintertime, there's no sunlight that reaches the pole. It just simply radiates heat to space. It cools down to temperatures below 150 K, which means these are temperatures that are colder than 120 degrees Celsius. In other words, colder than minus 200 Fahrenheit. It's bitterly cold in the wintertime, no heat whatsoever. And so the carbon dioxide, which freezes at minus 80 degrees Celsius, simply snow comes in the form of snow and covers the northern part of the planet in the northern hemisphere wintertime. And it gets so thick that it's up to a meter thick on the polar cap in the wintertime, and then it sublimates back in the atmosphere when spring comes. In the summertime, the temperature may reach as high as 200 Kelvin or above. 
Now 200 Kelvin, it's still pretty cold at 70 degrees below zero Celsius, which means those are equivalent to among the coldest days at the Antarctic in the wintertime. That is summer in the northern polar cap for Mars. So you can imagine it is as cold in the summer at the northern polar cap as it is in the wintertime and in the Antarctic on the Earth. So still, summer in the northern polar cap is no picnic. It still gets very, very cold. So that's about what we have uh, as far as the northern polar cap. Gives you a pretty good idea what we have there. And now we're going to take a closer look at the southern polar cap, which, by the way, seems to control the climate in a tremendous way. So stay tuned and we'll show you how that works. So carbon dioxide completely covers everything? In the winter time, carbon dioxide snows down in this entire area. This entire area gets cold enough, not just the polar cap, but around it, with a radius, with a diameter of about 3,000 kilometers, about 2,000 miles, and it gets completely covered by carbon dioxide snow. Just a little bit of snow out here, and as you get closer and closer, it gets thicker and thicker, and then it covers all the rocks, and it covers a nice one meter layer, about three feet thick in the wintertime. But well, when you say snows, how high can the snow fall since the atmosphere is not really thick? The atmosphere is not thick, but the atmosphere goes out like 10, 20 miles up. Of course, it gets very, very thin the higher you go. But it simply gets so cold that you get little flakes, little crystals of carbon dioxide that merge together. And so they form just like snow on the Earth, except from, from the, atm the atmospheric moisture. There you simply have the atmosphere itself that tends to freeze up and starts coming down in s small little snow snowflakes. So actually it starts snowing? It the actually atmosphere. snows uh, in the atmosphere of Mars in the wintertime. Everywhere, everywhere throughout the atmosphere. It just simply freezes up and starts snowing down. Yeah. Not just at the very no top part, but all throughout and the atmosphere. How high does it start, start snowing from? The atmosphere goes out to about 30 to 50 miles up from the surface. So, yeah, it uh, goes, goes way up. So why do they always say that the atmosphere is very low, not very thick? So, they, so when they say that the atmosphere is not very thick, it's not width this way. It's not height to space. It's simply there's not a lot of atmosphere. But it still takes up a, quite a bit of portion around the planet, just like around the Earth. There's a, there's a layer that goes up about 50 miles from the surface up into space that is the atmosphere. Does that have different layers, like the stratosphere and the troposphere and all those other spheres <laughs> of the Earth? It turns out that on Mars, you do not have the same layering system that you do on Mars. It's, it's different on Mars compared to the Earth. And the, the reason why we have different layers on the Earth is because the content of the atmosphere, you have a layer, an ozone layer, that collects energy from, from space, and then you have the thermosphere, which collects energy. So there's two different bands in the atmosphere on the Earth where energy is collected from space. As radiation comes in, that gets absorbed by the atmosphere. You don't have that so much on Mars. So Mars, you don't have that temperature variation like you do on the Earth. So there's no real distinction in the layers on Mars. Okay. 